There's been a lot of talk recently about SOC, system on a chip. System yeah. on a chip, yeah. So, why, why are people going in that direction? It seems to be everyone's using system on a chip. So I think it's, it's worth starting by actually looking at what a system on a chip is. What do we mean by system on a chip? And then we can start to talk about why that is becoming more popular when we do it. So to understand systems on a chip, I mean, because they are literally everywhere, it's probably helpful to look at an early example of that, of using it in a computer. Now, systems on a chip aren't just using computers. Obviously, mobile phones are built around systems on a chip. Look, let's be impartial here. Even Google ones are built around system on a chip. Somewhere down here in the archive, I have uh, an Acorn A3010 uh, machine. This is dating from around the early 90s, 92, possibly, maybe 93. And things. Let's whip the lid off, um, get rid of the keyboard, and we can actually see that there's very, very little inside this machine. Ooh, even less in it now. Very, very little inside this machine. We've got the power circuitry over here, which we're going to have to have. Power for the floppy drive. Let's just get that out of the way. We've got a TV modulator, so you can plug it into your TV. We've got some memory. We've got the operating system built into ROM. And the only other chips that are on here, apart from a few buffers to do things like the printer port, is we've got the chip that handles the floppy disk and the hard drive and things. Another one down here, which I suspect is the keyboard controller. And then we've got one chip here. And actually, this is the whole computer. Effectively, everything that you need to build the computer is now on this one silicon chip that was built by ARM, which was spun out of Acorn in about 1990. In fact, it says built week 47 of 1992, so literally 29 years ago today, almost. So that sort of time when we're filming this in mid-November in 2021. Other years are available if you're watching this at a later date. Yeah, I think uh, this is week 46, actually. So yeah, that's, yeah. that's week 47. Yeah, it? so actually, yeah. So, so everything was built into that one chip. We've got the memory outside, we've got the operating system ROM outside the controller for the floppy disk and the serial port and the printer port and things. But everything that forms the computer is in there. Now, okay, so we've got a system on a chip. What's that different? Well, let's look at what a computer from a bit earlier, same type of computer system around the same operating system, same sort of memory, same facilities. Let's look at the original Acorn Archimedes, of which this is a derivative, which is slightly bigger and slightly heavier, which is the Acorn A310 machine. If I pull the motherboard out, of this one without destroying it, we can see a much bigger difference between the two of them. So this is from late 87 that this machine was designed. When this machine was actually built is another matter. So this one probably does date from around 1987. Yeah, I'm seeing 87 on quite a few chips on here. So this machine, 87 week 24 for that one. This machine dates back to 1987, but Acorn continued to sell this machine up until about 1990, I think. Um, and then launched the A5000 machine, which is over there. And then a couple of years later, um, this one came up. But technologically, these are the same machine. The CPU is the same architecture of the CPU and things. It all works the same. The operating system is in the same things. But if we compare them, obviously the power supply is separate on there, but that's just doesn't really matter. We can see that rather than just having a single chip and the operating system and the RAM, We've actually got four huge chips that are on here. There's the floppy controller. That's the serial controller. The power loss port's built by some of these around here. And so we've actually got four chips on here that build the computer compared to the single one that builds it here. So actually what they, Acorn did was they took the design for their Archimedes computer, which was built around four chips. So you had the, the ARM CPU, which is down here. So this is the ARM2 CPU, the original ARM chip, everything that comes after it. Sean's mobile phone, the iPhone, the M1, all derived back from this. Well, and also the ARM1 that came before it. So you have this, which was a CPU, but you also needed a chip to handle the video, which I think is that one. Please don't spam me in the comments if I've just hit the wrong chip. One that supports IO and handling that, and then one that handles the memory. And so it was built up as a suite of four chips that worked together. This did the processing and things, and then it would send requests over the address bus to fetch or store data over the data bus. Coming out of this chip, you've got a series of parallel wires that form the address bus and the data bus, and it's probably similar on the other side and so on. And if we were to count them, there's probably in the region of about 32 of them coming out of here. And we can see that these are all connected to the MEMC chip, the memory controller here. 
So the complete computer system was built out of four chips that all had to be linked together. And when you designed the computer system, you had to take the 32 data lines that made up the data bus and connect them to where they need to go. You need to take the 26 lines that made up the address bus and connect them where they need to go. And so you ended up with huge amounts of parallel data wires connecting things together to make sure everything worked. So these chips working together made it into an Archimedes computer. You could take the ARM chip on its own and pair it with different things. It would still run ARM code, but it wouldn't be an Archimedes as such. You wouldn't be able to drive the graphics in the same way. If you had a different graphics chip in there, it would work in a different way. So our system was built up of all of these components. Yes, we had some extra things around it to handle things like the floppy drive. You could have an optional hard disk on things and so on, the serial port. But the main things that formed the computer were the video controller, the I.O. controller, the memory controller, and the ARM CPU itself. And so that's what the system is made of that. But what Acorn did was they took the design for all of those chips and they integrated them together onto this single chip. And so what you connected to the edge of here was still the same things, but they only had to go to the memory in the operating system. And they only had to go to the chip that controlled everything else. And so it simplified the design of the system. If you look at the number of wires coming off here, you've got wires uh, snaking all around the motherboard to get to the various place on both sides of the thing. If you look at the same on this one, it becomes a lot simpler. We've got the wires are going off to the RAM and the ROM over there. The wires are coming off over here to connect up to the interface and things. So it's a lot simpler to design what's going on. A lot of the interconnections that are needed between the different chips that make up the system can be sort of, they're still there. They still exist, but they're all integrated into the one chip. And so the computer design becomes a lot simpler. One chip connected to what it needs to go to rather than to have four chips, connect them together, and then connect them to all you need to. And I think we can just see from a size point of view, if you're building something like a, a mobile phone, fitting one chip into it, even with the way that things have been shrunk in technology now, is much simpler than trying to fit four chips in there. So is this, this is a cost and kind of miniaturization thing, really? Yeah, so I mean, the thing is, so one advantage is it reduces the cost because you've only got one chip you need to make that does everything. And so, but it also makes it easier to build the system because when you've got circuits, particularly when they're running at the speeds that they're running at now, you have to make sure that all the sort of connections are the same length, otherwise the signals can get out of phase with each other. And if you look at a modern motherboard, you can often see you get sort of like, weird patterns in the paths on the PCB just to keep them all the same length so that the signals arrive in phase with each other at the same time. So it makes it much easier to design the system. And also there's a whole load of things that you suddenly no longer need because for example the ARM chip has the signals coming off to it which needs to drive the external bus and that then connects to the MEMC chip which needs to receive those and pick them back up and connect them in. If they're all on the same piece of silicon, you can sort of remove some of those things and simplify the design because you only have the connections to the outside that you need. This is probably the simplest way you'd want to build a, a system on a chip and it combines the main parts of the original machine down to a single chip so that you could actually sort of just simplify the design of the motherboard. You could produce these much simpler and obviously reduce your costs, which is great. But obviously these days, the functionality that is being placed onto these systems on chip is massively increasing. Um, the sort of designs in a, an iPhone or a other mobile phone and an iPad on the M1 chip and things, they're not only including the circuitry to do the computations, the graphics and so on, they're also including video decompression and compression engines, they're including sort of hardware encryption and decryption engines and things that you need on there. They're adding functionality that which traditionally have been part of a separate things, sort of the digital signal processing and image signal processing needed for a, a, a camera and integrating it onto the same piece of silicon. And the advantage of that is that when you design your system, whether it's a computer, a mobile phone and things, you no longer have to think, well, okay, I need to put my CPU on there and then connect that to uh, the image signal processor chip and work out how to run the connections there. I can just connect the camera directly to the one system on a chip and that system on a chip can be connected. Possibly it's even got the sort of the audio DAX built in there, the analog side of things. So that can be connected directly to your headphone output. If you remember them on a mobile phone and things. 
Uh, and okay, let's say the speaker on the mobile phone for you when you're making a phone call, um, if you remember them, uh, uh, and things. And you can just simplify everything. So actually, everything's integrated into this one chip. Now, the advantage of that is it makes things very, very simple to build a phone. You have one chip, a few uh, power support components on there and things, and you can put this together. I'm talking at a high level. I'm not a chip designer. Uh, and things, put that disclaimer in there, please, Sean, uh, and stuff. And it makes it easier to design it. But it also comes with a disadvantage because those things are always built in. Um, if you've got separate things like here and you only want the ARM CPU, you can use just the ARM CPU and put it in a different design of machine. As the clock speed has increased, I mean, this, is, this, this ran at eight megahertz. This one, I think they managed to bump it up to about 12 megahertz. Roughly didn't make much, that much difference. Slightly faster, slightly slower. Um, you didn't have to worry too much about the design of your motherboard. Um, signals from uh, electrical signals travel at some function of the speed of light. Um, three times 10 to the eight meters per second. They're gonna travel relatively quickly from one here when your computer runs at eight megahertz. As your computer gets progressively faster, let's say we get to three gigahertz where most machines sort of are today. If you do the maths, distance equals speed times time. The speed of light is three times 10 to the eight meters per second. The distance, the time is one clock cycle, one over three times 10 to the nine cycles per second. You start to think, well, actually 10 centimeters is the amount I can travel in one clock cycle. So if this sends out data at three gigahertz, that's roughly 10 centimeters. By the time it's got here, the CPU's on the next clock cycle, either wanting the data and things, so it'll take at least two clock cycles for the signal to get from here and then back before you take into account the processing time that is involved because the computers are running so fast. And looking at those tracks, it could be double that distance. Well, exactly, because I mean, if you look at it, we're sort of coming along here, going around, taking a sort of dog leg around here, sort of over the first hurdle, around the things, jumping over the waterfront, blah, 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 blah. and finally we've got to the video controller. So actually, and of course, you then got to go back because if you want to sort of respond to that, you need to go back and things. Uh, and so actually, as your computer gets bigger, you have to either take that into account and design the interconnect protocols, the way that they talk to each other, to be more like a network and say, send the data out and then you get it back later. Or you have to bring things closer together. And of course, if you bring things closer together, eventually you end up with everything packaged together. Most of this motherboard is empty space. It's just sort of literally there's nothing on it on either side, I think. Um, whereas this one is densely packed on both sides with interconnects between the different chips on there. Of course, there are disadvantages as well to system on a chip in that you're, you're stuck with the integration you got when you design the system on a chip, um, which may be fine for a lot of devices. I mean, if you look at Apple, they use their chips in various different things. The, the M1 chip is used in the Mac, it's used in the iPad, the A5 chip was used in the iPhone and in one of the Apple TVs and things they could reuse it. But often you think about, well, actually the A5 chip probably had the image signal processor in there, which was not being used on the uh, Apple TV because it's got no camera and things. And so actually you're stuck with that integration. And that's fine if it's got the things you want in there, but if it doesn't have the things you want in there, then it doesn't have it. You still have to put it as an external device or live without it and things. So you can't upgrade things in the same way. You can't say, well, actually, I don't want to, Core i3 CPU in my system on a chip, and I want a Xeon, that's a different product line, and so someone has to design that and you have to put it in there. Now, it doesn't mean that it can't be expandable. You aren't forced to just have what's in the system on a chip. If you design it, you can put a PCIe as an output on there. The Raspberry Pi 4 classically does that. It has a PCIe USB chip on it, USB 3 chip, which talks to the system on a chip to support the USB 3 ports and things. And, use the compute module, you can connect that up to different things. People have done serial ATA controllers, NVMe drives, and so on. But you, the, the system on a chip is a fixed functional piece that you get all or nothing, basically. You can't pick and choose to have part of it without effectively spinning up a separate chip. But it does make it much simpler to design a system if the system on a chip does everything you want it to. And BBC Basic emerged as a compromise between Roger's experience of building basics for earlier Acorn machines and the BBC's requirement for a language which. Um, was yeah, I mean that's what that's one way of thinking about it. You're filling up the whole screen 50 times a second, and you have to generate everything within those 312 and a half lines.